My name is Samantha, and I'm 19. Have you ever wanted to change your body? This desire hasn't left me my entire life. Because of my peculiarity, I didn't even want to look at myself in the mirror. I was born with such long legs that now I look like a centaur. One part of my body is human, the other is from a horse, giraffe, or some kind of other animal. I couldn't even imagine that one day these legs would save someone's life. If you read fashion magazines and think long legs are really cool, then I want to upset you. It is unbearable. I am unable to choose pants, can't put on heels, don't fit into cars, and when I get my body hair removed, they charge me double, like for two pairs of legs. But did I find an advantage in my legs? Yes. I walk faster than everyone. Each winter in my hometown, there were big snowfalls. The power would go off, transport would grind to a halt, and people couldn't even get to the supermarkets because of the snowbanks. It is for this my heroic legs came in handy. 24 inches of snow? That's nonsense for a person with super long legs. But things at school weren't going too well. I was the main laughing stock of the whole class. I sat alone at the back and my not-so-witty classmates threw notes with very hurtful drawings. Spider Samantha with eight legs. Samantha jumping in the Australian savanna with a pack of kangaroos. I wanted to cry because of these jokes. I didn't have any friends, but thankfully, I had my sister Elizabeth. She is five years younger than me. We had a really sisterly friendship. She didn't care about the length of my legs at all. In addition, Elizabeth was often sick and stayed home. We spent wonderful evenings together, playing Monopoly or just talking about nothing. When I applied to university in another city, I was really sad to be apart from Elizabeth. But on the other hand, I was happy to be leaving my classmates. I hoped that in the city I would meet new friends and my life would change for the better. About the fact that everything will remain the same, I found out the first day in university. I sat at the edge of the auditorium so as to stretch my legs out, which otherwise wouldn't fit, and I watched my classmates. A girl came in whose name, as I later found out, was Maria. Oh, what a beauty! Elegant, miniature, and on high heels, which I would never wear. But when she was walking by, she tripped over my legs and flew down. As a result, Maria fell and broke her heel, while I got a new nickname, Samantha with Python Legs. During the first year, I had to focus a little less on my studies and work as a courier because I had to compensate Maria for her heels, which costed 700 bucks. Even when I gave her the money and apologized, our relationship didn't improve. Maria was the favorite person in the group, so she quickly turned all the students against me. In university, I once again felt unhappy, the same way I felt in school. In this city, I didn't have my beloved sister, nor a single person who would want to befriend a long-legged monster. I even googled how to shorten my legs, but there's enough pain in my life. But something was good. I was presenting a report in my paper when he walked in. The head coach of the university team, John. He had extremely long legs, but they looked so proportional. He didn't look at all like a giraffe the way I did. Of course, all the girls suddenly wanted to become athletes, but I held back. Why would I go do these sports? Suddenly, I noticed the coach staring at my legs. Girl, would you like to sign up to the track and field team, he asked. He looked at me in such a way that I obviously accepted straight away. And though I was so ashamed of going to the first practice, I did it. I couldn't find the sports uniform that was my size and looked quite ridiculous in my short leggings. The girls on the team laughed at me, but the coach didn't care. What wonderful athletic legs. You have great potential, he said. It was already during the first one that I realized I do have potential. These legs could not only clear snow, but they could run really fast. After one lap, I already overtook all of the girls on the team. God, for the first time in my life, I was in first place. For the first time, I was the best. 
I stopped trying to hide my legs and wasn't shy of my short leggings and protruding knees. I had one goal, to be the best runner and win the main track and field state competition. There was only a month left until the competition, and the coach predicted my victory. Judging by my results, I would even be able to compete in the Olympics and someday even beat Muhammad Farah's record. I really wanted to share my joy with my sister Elizabeth. I called her and told her about my achievements in track and field, but it seemed she wasn't too happy for me. Her voice was quiet and sad. Maybe she's still too young? Maybe she doesn't understand what it means to be a participant of a major state sporting event. Elizabeth only asked me to come over. She needed to inform me of something, but not over the phone. At first, I didn't agree, as I had to train for the competition. But then I heard such a plea in her voice that I did. In addition, I miss my sister and parents so much. When I came to my hometown, then I was met by a snowfall. I had already forgotten what it is like when the winter is cold and snowy. I barely got home. When I came in, I saw the sad faces of my family. They aren't at all happy to see me, but that wasn't the case. My beautiful sister Elizabeth looked very bad, like a shadow. She shocked me with the news that due to a chronic kidney disease, she urgently needs an organ transplant. If they don't find a donor in the next month, then... I don't even want to discuss what could happen to her. From that moment on, I could only think about Elizabeth. I didn't care about the competition, medals, or even the Olympics. Just to be able to find my sister a kidney. I messaged my coach that I would be unable to participate in the competition. He'll probably become upset when he reads this. But does it matter? I spent entire days in the hospital, holding Elizabeth's hand during the dialysis, praying and waiting for a call. More than anything in the world, I just wanted to hear the four words, we found a kidney. Elizabeth felt worse and worse as the time on the clock passed. I could not save my sister. But suddenly, a doctor came into the room. He said that they found an organ and it is being brought on an ambulance. Elizabeth can get ready for the surgery. I felt such relief. My sister will live. But suddenly, the electricity turned off in the whole hospital. The backup generators turned on. I ran outside and saw an actual snow apocalypse. The snow had been falling all day, but strong wind picked it up. It damaged the wires. What a cursed city. But it's okay. At least my sister will have a kidney. Mom ran out to me all in tears. She said the car with the donor organ got stuck in a huge traffic jam. But if they don't come on time, it may be too late. There are just a few hours left while the car is three miles away from the hospital. Suddenly, I got a message on my phone from my coach. What do you mean you won't run? No one other than you can do this. This was a sign. It was true. No one other than me would be able to do it. It's not for nothing nature awarded me long legs, but I could win this race, the race for my sister's life. To the car and back to the hospital, only six miles. It was difficult, but my mom made an agreement with the doctors, so then they gave me the container with the kidney. No one believed I would be able to run alone such a distance in snow to the ambulance and back. But I set up the GPS and ran, maybe the most important run of my life. My long legs fell through the snow. The snowflakes cut my cheeks. My fingers became numb from the cold. Will I make it? After two miles, I fell into a snow slump. The snow was even in my mouth. I crawled out onto the bridge and saw the signal lights of the ambulance. When I received the treasured container, then it was as though I was filled with new strength. I took a five-minute break and headed back. It seemed like it became easier to run. I knew that it was not just a simple kidney in my hands, but my sister's life. Once in the hospital, I checked the time. I ran six miles in 40 minutes. Elizabeth's surgery was successful and she's now completely healthy and went back to normal life. My long legs were worth all the jokes of my peers because as a result, they did what they were meant to do, save my sister's life. Yes, I had a high chance of winning the main state competition, but so what? 
I already won the greatest victory. Have you ever had situations in life when the fate of your close ones depended on you? Write it in the comments. Give a like and subscribe to the channel.